Hey, I'm Dr. Dave Harris, and this is a series of videos on television and video production. We're talking about video switchers, and specifically in this video, we're talking about downstream keyers. We're using as our example switcher an ATEM switcher, and this particular switcher has two downstream keyers that are going to be located in this area. I want to let you know that the words downstream and key can be confusing to some people. Downstream means that it's going to be at the very end of the video pathway, meaning if we have background, if we've got effects keys, if we've got all kinds of other things that we may be doing upstream, the downstream keyers are going to be what's going to be layered on top of all of that right before the video leaves the switcher. So downstream keyers are going to be things like lower thirds, they're going to be things like logos, things that you would want to have be on top of everything else. I also want to let you know that many, many professional switchers, including the ATEM switcher, does allow to have as at its output a clean feed. And the clean feed would be everything that's output as part of the switcher with the exception of what's on one or both of the downstream tiers. So you, you can actually record video that's free of logos and other identifying information just in case you want to use that video in the future and possibly change the logo information or the business information that's a part of that video production. Also, with regard to the word key, key is a fancy word for cut. And what we're essentially doing is we're going to cut out or key out elements of the graphic that we don't want to show. For example, the area that is black on a particular key. That gives us then the DSK acronym, which is short for downstream keyer. We have two downstream keyers on this switcher, and we have the ability to either cut those DSKs in, which we would do by hitting the DSK1 cut or DSK2 cut buttons, or we can fade those keyers in by using the auto buttons here. The fade in will last this amount of time. So in this case, it's set for one second for downstream keyer two or DSK two. We'd push that button and over the course of one second, we would have a fade in of that downstream key. We're not going to talk about the FTB button at this point, but I do want to let you know that there are additional downstream keyer buttons just above this location. So here we have that uh, rate of the downstream key auto button. So just above that, we've got two additional buttons. One is called DSK1 tie, DSK2 tie. What that does is if we want the downstream keyer one to enter our picture or be a part of our video production, at the same time we do a background switch or a key switch, which would happen over here in this area of the switcher, we can push that tie button. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring downstream keyer one live at the same time we push the cut or the auto button on a background transition. So this allows us to actually fade in or cut to both effects keys as well as both downstream keys at the same time we're making a background switch. What we would do, we would have the background, the effects key one, the effects key two, the DSK one tie, the DSK two tie button switched, and or I should say selected, we would push the cut button or the auto button and all of those things would happen at once. Keep in mind that the pressing of these buttons does not actually perform anything at all. All it does is tie this to a background or a key switch down in our cut and auto button area. So as promised, we're going to talk about the FTB button. This is short for fade to black. And the purpose of this particular FTB button is to make it so that all keyers, all effects and the background, meaning generally the cameras, are going to be faded to black all at once. It's very difficult for us to do this in practice if we're not using an FTB button. Also, it's going to happen at the rate of one second. In this case, this is adjustable in the menu system. And I want to affectionately refer to what's called an idiot, idiot light. The FTB button, once that's pushed, the FTB or fade to black will happen over the course of one second. And then this light will start to flash red about once per second. That's just letting you know that the switcher is currently in a black faded state. What happens is, I've seen this happen a ton of times. People will have that FTB button pressed, it'll be flashing at them, they'll be pushing buttons on the program bus, the preview bus, the switcher appears not to be responding in any way, shape, or form, and that's because it is in a black faded state. The idiot light is there just saying, hey, hey, you are in fade to black, don't forget, don't forget. All right, so that's the joy of the fade to black. Lastly, there is a setting in the menu system, which we do cover in another video, the FTB AFV setting. FTB is short for fade to black, 
AFV is short for audio follow video. And this is going to uh, fade the audio as well as the video if we have audio running through the switcher. In other words, if we are using the switcher's audio system and encoding on our video output that audio, then if we have that FTB AFV selected, as soon as we push this FTB button, it's also going to fade the audio out at the same rate that it's fading the video. This video is part of a series of videos on video and television production. Go to our channel, find more information about videos and playlists, and subscribe for updated videos. And please do visit our Patreon page for additional content. And if you'd like to donate to the cause to bring additional videos like this to your doorstep right here on YouTube. And as always, thanks for your support. I am Dr. Dave Harris.